Good day and welcome to the UFC 166 conference call. Today's conference is being recorded. At this time, I would like to turn the conference over to Mr. Ryan Grab. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the UFC 166 Velasquez versus the Santos 3 conference call. As a reminder, the event takes place Saturday, October 19th from the Toyota Center in Houston and airs live on pay-per-view at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific, with the prelims taking place on Fox Sports 1 beginning at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Today on the call, we're joined by UFC heavyweight champ Cain Velasquez, as well as former champ Junior Dos Santos. On the collateral, will be available to help translate if needed. We're also joined by the co-main event heavyweight contenders Daniel Cormier and Roy Nelson, currently ranked second and ninth, respectively, in the division. As a reminder, Countdown UFC 166 airs next Wednesday, October 16th at 8 p.m. Eastern on Fox Sports 1, immediately followed by the third and final episode of UFC 166 Prime Time at 8.30. At this time, we'll open the call for questions. Operator, please prompt for questions, please. Yes, sir. Thank you. And if you have a question today, please press star one on your telephone keypad. If you are using a speakerphone, please make sure your mute function is turned off to allow your signal to reach our equipment. Again, press star one to ask a question. We'll pause for just a moment to allow everyone an opportunity to signal for questions. We'll go to our first question. Sean Alshadi, MMA Fighting, please go ahead. Hi, guys. Thank you for the time. I appreciate it. Uh, my first question is for Daniel. Um, a few days ago, Dana White kind of laid out the immediate future of the 2 5 division. Basically, just to have John Jones and Alexander each fight maybe around March and then square up in a rematch if they both win. So, I guess my question is in light of that, does it kind of change your, any of your plans for a jump to 2 5 if maybe an immediate title shot isn't a possibility? Uh, no, I'm still going to do it. You know, I've already started to, to lose weight and, and keep an eye on the division. You know, things can always change with a great performance, and uh, as we've seen in the past. You know, a guy can put himself in a position uh, that he probably didn't think he had before if he can do something unexpected in a fight or look really good in a fight. So, no, it doesn't deter me. I think it's it's uh, the weight class that I'm going to fight in from, from now on or for the foreseeable future. But, you know, I've got a tough fight ahead of me next. I to get through that first because if I don't win that fight, then it doesn't matter what those guys are doing because uh, I become uh, just another guy uh, trying to make my way toward getting where they are. Okay. And then uh, I guess also I'm just curious, um, what was your logic behind requesting Roy to cut off his beard? I mean, was that kind of some practical advantage in your mind or was it really just to mess with him? Well, I mean, you know, he, uh, you know, Roy and I have been going back and forth and, you know, kind of messing with me up top of my in my head and everything. So there's something there with that beard. You know, he has it for a reason. He likes having it. So why not make him shave it? You know, and 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 take that comfort zone away from him. So yeah, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of tactical. And also, just you know, uh, I thought those guys in Canada looked nice, man. Everybody looked nice and clean and and like like you know, professional athletes. <laughs> All right. Well, then I guess for my questions for Roy, I'm just curious for your reaction to the whole beard thing when you first heard of it. I mean, what's your response to the whole situation to him making you cut it off? Um, that's, you know, everybody's always entitled to their opinion. Dr. Dana. Okay. All right, thank you guys. I appreciate the time. We'll go to our next question from Kim Pishna. Hey, guys. Uh, my first question is for Kane. And Kane, this is uh, the third time in a two year span that you've had to fight. Have you kind of grown weary of preparing for the same opponent in the same fight um, in such a relatively short time span? No, 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 not, 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 not weary at all. You know, um, you know, he, he's uh, Julius, so he's a great opponent. You know, I'm, uh, I'm excited for this this matchup. You know. Um, there's a lot riding on this fight, and um, I mean, you know, he, he he's one of the best out there. So obviously, I mean, you know, you you get excited going to the train um, when you find a guy like that. So I'm uh, I'm excited for this fight. Do you like that uh, trilogy aspect of it that kind of throws you guys up there with some of the great fight trilogies of of history? You know, some of the big rivalries there have been in in, in combat sports in general. Well, well, definitely, you know, um, that's just the way it turned out, you know. He won the first one, I won the second one. So, obviously, you know, we need the third one to, to kind of settle the uh, the score. But, um, 
but yeah, I think so. I think you know we're we're two of the toughest guys out there in the in the division, you know, and uh, I mean, it just so happens that we have to fight again. So it is what it is. And for Junior, um, very much the same question. This is the third time you've had to fight Kane in a two-year span, which is a pretty short time span in fighting. Um, but you're coming in in a little different aspect because you're the challenger again now. So what is it like for you having to prepare for the same opponent three times in, in just a two-year time span? Well, uh, for me, it's, uh, it's an honor to be competing in a, such a high level, uh, with, you know, with this guy. Ken Velasquez not right now is the champion. I think he's the guy that I have to beat in this division. And I respect that a lot, you know, and that's why I'm training so hard here. And I'm, I'm, I mean, <clears throat> spending a lot of time in the, at the gym, you know, and thinking about how I can beat this guy. So, uh, yeah. It's it's uh it's normal for me, you know, because uh doesn't matter who I have to fight, you know, I have to be uh I have to give my best all the time, you know, during my training and everything, especially in this case, especially when I fight Ken Velasquez, you know, I know how hard uh he fights, you know, he goes he pushed the fight. So I have to 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 do a, a very good job at the gym to get there and, and put my Like we lost Junior. Yeah. We'll go to our next question. All right. Thank you. Carlos Contreras, please go ahead. Carlos Contreras, Linia, please go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Thank you. Sorry, sorry, I didn't hear you. Uh, the question is for King Velasquez. Um, King, uh, I want to ask you if this was uh, the biggest of your promotions, you, you had a uh, we had a, a lot of lights in this in this promotion, and yeah, I heard you coming to Mexico next next Monday to have a few interviews and few more promotion for the fight. This is the biggest uh, promotion you ever had for a fight in the UFC. No, no, it seems like they're all you know kind of the same. You know, um, for each fight, um, the same amount of uh, you know interviews and, and media obligations. So, um, um, you know, I, I think I think over time I've gotten used to it and I'm used to it now. So I mean, it just comes with you know with, with the job coming to, um, close to a fight. You have to do this. So um, it's fine. You know, yeah, going to Mexico on, on Monday for all day, and then from then on, uh, fly straight into Houston. So um, it'll be good. You know, all the work's done already. Um, you know, go in there, take care of business, and uh, that's it. Are you going to have any uh, um, IROF signing or just want to be uh, promotion with the media? Just with the media, yeah. Yeah, doing some uh, promotional stuff there with, uh, you know, newspaper TV. Um, I think they're all going to – I'm not going to be going around. I think they're all going to be just um, come to the hotel and then we're, we're all going to do the interviews uh, at the hotel, I think. But um, I think we're doing one, I guess, uh, TV show. I'm not sure which show it is, but – um, the UFC really wants me to do this, so I said I will. So I'll, I'll see you then here. Thank you. And we'll take our next question from Dave Diver with Post Media News. Hi, uh, thanks you guys for the time. Uh, for for Canyon Junior, uh, I'm wondering what the um, what the mindset and what what the emotions are like. Uh, training for uh, training for each other in the different positions you've been in. You know, uh, having having won and then coming back for a rematch, and how that might differ from from the mindset and motivation uh, from having lost to the other and coming in for the rematch. I guess for for both of you, I know Kane, if you want to take that one first. Okay. Well, well, for me, it's always a thing of we're always trying to improve. You know. Um, you know, we lost the first one, won the second one, but even though, I mean, I'm expecting a, a, a separate fight in, in this third one, so, you know, the only thing I can do is, is obviously get better, um, look at the film and just look at the stuff that I that I did that I think I can improve on. And, you know, we have, we, um, me and me, Javier Mendez have, have watched the film over and over again, and we picked out stuff here and there that, that, that we could always improve on. So we're trying to go in there 
as a better fighter. So that that's how I see this. There's uh, there, there's never you know any um, you know I guess complacency isn't isn't a fair word, but uh, you know when when you come off a win, there might be a tendency to just focus on you know hey did well you know everything is great, but you don't take that uh, you don't take that approach. No, no, definitely not. You know, because I, I know what it what it feels like to uh, to lose a belt. You know, and those feelings are still in me. You know, and I don't want to go back to having those feelings again. So that's what keeps me hungry right now. You know, it's uh, it's to stay on top. I don't want to. I want to lose what I have. So, you know, there. Um, I'm not. I'm not satisfied for uh, as far as where I am right now. I want to keep continuing and keep staying in, in this position here. Okay. Thanks, Kane. Uh, Junior. Uh, same. You know, same, same questions. Uh, Ana? Uh, ele, perguntou, ele, per, ele perguntou como é que é diferente entrando, fazendo a preparação para a luta com as posições diferentes, né? Primeiro você era o, o desafiante, na segunda luta você era o campeão, agora você é o desafiante de novo, uma foi vitória, outra foi perda. Essas perspectivas diferentes através da qual você entra na luta afetam como você se prepara para essa luta? Uh, well, the thing is, you know, this third fight is going to be completely different, I think so, from the, the, the other fights, you know, because now Ken Velasquez knows about, more about me, I know more about him, you know, and we are, I think, more prepared, prepared you know, to fight each other. So uh, that's my motivation come from, you know, I want to fight with the best. And right now, I think uh, I feel like I'm going to fight with the best, you know. So uh, I want to beat this guy. I want to beat the best because uh, it's, yeah, that's why we, we work hard, you know. And and that's come, that's where my, that's come my motivation. All right. Uh, just a quick follow-up again for both of you. How much do you guys each personally watch the tape of uh, of your previous two is that something you guys like to do do you leave it up to the coaches and how much do you take away from really analyzing uh the video of your first two fights i like to do that you know i think it's important to study our opponent especially when you fought him uh when i i fought him you know and uh especially the second one because i did a lot a lot of things wrong and he did very well so uh, he, he got a uh, a very good uh, performance in that fight, and I I I used to watch to to learn more about about about, about him, you know, and about myself too. So I think it's very important. I used to do. Okay, right, are you a big uh, are you big video guy yourself? Yeah, yeah, for me too. You know, um, I always watch with, with my uh, coach Javier Mendez. You know, we always get down and watch the uh, the, the previous fights. You know, no matter who who we're fighting. Uh, we find out, you know, we, we, we have an opponent, we watch film on them. Um, you know, in this one, um, you know, probably once a week or so, we, we uh, watch the film. And it's good, you know, it's good to analyze, keep stuff fresh in your mind, to, uh, you know, the game plan. What are we going to do when we go out there? Well, we look at the film, and we're going to always get new stuff from the uh, from the film as far as, you know, what we, what we can improve on. Uh, what we do good, what, what we need to keep, and what we need to like, kind of change in there. So, um, yeah, we're always we're always watching it. So you're going. You say you watch it once a week. Like you're going back. You know, how many times then have you watched? You know, I guess specifically, uh, you know, the second one. You maybe take a little bit more out of. But I'm curious, how many times have you watched that fight in preparation? Well, once a week. I mean, you know, yeah. we've been in a uh, eight or nine week camp, so. Yeah. Maybe, you know, maybe a few more times in there. But, um, yeah, you know, me and Javier always sit down, and after, after training uh, with him, you know, uh, we sit down and watch it. You know, it's just a thing. I mean, Javier has watched it more than I have, and he's picked out, you know, more stuff than than I have of it, you know, and, and has been talking to me about it. So it's good that both, both of us sit down and, uh, you know, make sure we're on the same page. Okay. All right. Uh, thanks, you guys, for the time, as always. Thank you. Thank you. And as a reminder, if you have a question today, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. We'll go to our next question from Damon Martin with FoxSports.com. 
Um, you know, this is a title fight, so obviously the intensity is already amped up. But knowing that the winner of this fight may not see the other guy potentially ever again because this is looked at as a rubber match, does that amp things up even more for, for this fight, make it even bigger in your mind? I think so. You know, it does. You know, it definitely puts more motivation in there. Um, you obviously want to win. You know, if if, if you uh, – we both are one-on-one. We obviously want to win the uh, – the third one, you know, and kind of end it there. But, um, but I mean, yeah, I mean, every, you know, it seems like every fight is our, our toughest fight and, and, you know, most important. So, I mean, but I think this one has a little extra going, you know, just a little extra behind it, so. And you've been training with Daniel Cormier for the last several years. Obviously, you guys have been very good friends, and, and, and you know, he's coached you in wrestling. You've coached him. i, I got to ask you, with his weight change, if he's dropping down a little bit, can you can you kind of give us a little insight into his work this camp and how he's looking uh, going into his fight with Roy Nelson? Because, obviously, you're working with him pretty much every day. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's been looking great, you know. Yeah, dropping that weight down. Um, also, you know, being being uh, quicker than, than I, I think he has in the past. And I mean, he looks good as far as man. We, you know, we're uh, we're sparring. I mean, we're, we're we're pushing each other. So for me, it's the best training I can get. You know, I think for him as well. I think we're we're uh, we're good. At, you know, we're just a good team out there. You know, uh, just me and him having to spar with each other and having you know, especially now and being on the same card. I mean, you know, all all our workouts are kind of with each other right now. So it's uh, it's good. You know, we're we're picking at the same moment and. Uh, I think we're both looking good. And, and a question for Daniel. Uh, DC, you know, you talked a lot about your weight cut and, and doing it the right way and the gradual way. Can you kind of give us a sense of what the difference is this time making the weight versus when you were going through it in the Olympics, you know, your your nutrition, your weight cutting? How how different do you feel now? Kind of compare the two situations. Well, well, it's different. You know, when I was going to the Olympic Games, I was actually cutting weight. Like, right now, I haven't necessarily started to cut weight. I just started to monitor it a little bit and starting to diet and uh, just put myself in a position where when it's time to cut weight, I can do it more comfortably. But there are a couple things. I mean, I think there have been a lot of advances in nutrition uh, applied to sports lately than when I was going through it back in wrestling. You know, I was from a... Uh, from from the old school thought where you just get the weight off, step on the scale no matter how you feel, and you just get yourself ready to compete. But uh, I think there's been a lot of advancements in resources. You know, I have more resources now than I had when I was competing in wrestling, so I'm able to uh, uh, get people to help me with my diet, someone to actually help me with making my food. Uh, It's just, uh, you know, people want to help. You know, when you start to do things uh, positive, more people are willing to help you. So I think that's probably the biggest difference. And final question for you, DC, kind of the reverse of what I asked Kane. You've worked with Kane through uh, I don't know how many fights at this point. Give us a sense of his camp and how he's looking in this rematch. Could we see an even better Kane Velasquez? You're probably a better person to tell us than anybody. You know, man, like uh, as we train together, sometimes you would think, well, man, this is getting good. You know, we're making each other better. We're pushing each other. And then Kane comes in on on a, on a Wednesday, and he feels like a different human being. You know, he seems to to get better on a day to day basis. Kane Velasquez is better. Yeah, Monday when we started than he was two weeks ago or a month ago. Uh, the you won't even recognize the guy that fought last December to the guy that's going to fight next week. You know, so uh, whereas Kane's prepared to a better Junior Dos Santos, I hope that they've taken that approach for him. You know, I. I watched the prime time, and uh, I just think that there are a lot of mistakes being made over in Brazil if they're not preparing for a, a better, stronger, hungrier, harder punching Cain Velasquez. Because if he didn't hit hard in December, when he gets hit on uh, on October 19th, it'll feel like they're fighting a completely different person. Awesome. Thanks, DC. We'll take our next question from Rodrigo Del Campo with Indiscutido. Uh, hi, thank you for the time. Uh, my question would be for Kane. There were reports this morning in one of the major newspapers in Mexico about a UFC show in Mexico City, maybe in April, and then down the line in 2014, uh, Ultimate Fighter with Mexican fighters. They would obviously ask you as a coach, so I would like to know if you would like to do that, and also if you would like to do it against Fabricio Verdum, who would be the obvious choice since, since he also speaks. Spanish. 
Yeah, I would love that, you know, to uh, to fight there. If it's the first, you know, fight card there, I would love to fight there. And also, you know, if they ask me to, if the UFC asked me to be the uh, Ultimate Fighter coach, I mean, definitely, you know, definitely, I would, uh, I would definitely love to take the opportunity to uh, to do that. And the situations like this, uh, pressure to your camps, pressure to your fights. I mean, every time you you are with the Mexican media, all the questions are about a, me- a future Mexican show. Obviously, the future of the UFC in Mexico wants you as a headliner in a Mexico show. Is this added pressure? Are you taking it with stride? How do you feel about this? Not out of pressure, you know. Um, you know, it, it's, I feel like it's kind of easy as far as my job. You know, I need to come in and train and go out there when, it, when, it's, when it's time to fight, go out there and perform, and that's it, you know. Um, you know, uh, if those opportunities come, I would love to do that. But right now, you know, I'm thinking about the fight versus Dos Santos. I think this is, uh, you know, going to be my toughest fight to date. So, um, you know, my my whole mindset and uh, my whole my whole uh, you know my whole thinking right now is all about this fight coming up. Perfect. And just a quick question for Junior: uh, With the fight happening in Houston, it's going to be basically a Latino and Mexican fight. Are you ready for the crowd? Have you done any mental preparation or any type of preparation for a crowd that will be completely in, in Kane's corner? Well, everything what I'm thinking now is about the, you know, how it's going to be my performance against Kane Velasquez. And for sure, the crowd is going to be rooting for him uh, a lot. But for sure, it's going to, I, I'm going to have people rooting for me too. So uh, that's that's the the thing I want to hear there. I want to hear uh, noise from that, those people, you know, that's going to be rooting for me. And, well, when I, I'm a very focused guy, and you know, when I, uh, I'll i be there in, inside the cage, I'll look to, to Ken Velasquez, and I will keep my attention on, on, on him. Perfect. Thank you, guys. Our next question will come from Mike Geppetto with Fox Sports. Hi, guys. Um, so for... For Kane and Junior, like everyone said, I mean, this is their third time fighting in, in, in less than two years, and it seems like you guys keep crossing paths. No one, no one on the other heavyweight can get in front of you in line. Do you expect this trilogy fight is really kind of the conclusion to this rivalry, or do you think that it's, you'll probably fight even one, one or even two more times in the future? What do you think? You know, I, th- I think this will be uh, the last one. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think this is, you know, this is the one that, that settles it all. So, you know, obviously you have to wait and see. But, yeah, I think this is this will be the end of it. I don't think so. I don't think it's going to be the last one, you know. And, uh, uh, yeah, I just don't think. I think we're going to fight each other again. And uh, in the future or soon or late, we're going to be fighting again because, you know, uh, I think Kevin Velasquez is a great opponent you know, and a great fighter. You know, he's going to try to keep himself in a good position all the time, or as a champion, or uh, in a good position in the rank. And I'll do the same with myself. So I think we're going to see each other again. And Kane, why do you seem to think that you'll be able to put Junior in your rearview mirror after this? Uh, you know, I think I think with this being the third one, you know, and then uh, you know we're both one on one. This being the third one, this will kind of settle, uh, you know, the whole the uh, the trilogy, you know, itself. So I think, um, I mean, that's it. You know, I think there'll be other opponents that that need to be, you know, fought and everything else. And you know, I think it'll just be that. Okay. Um, you know, I wanted to ask you, you know, about the the second fight you had with Kane. Um, I think during the fight, he tried something like 33 takedowns against you, uh, was successful on something like 10 or 11. So you, you stopped a lot of them, and you got up from a lot of them, but, you know, his grinding style is just so so difficult. I'm sure you, you trained a lot to make sure your conditioning was good and to be able to get up that many times it showed. Um, what was that experience like compared to what you expected, and, and how do you sort of um, – stop him from doing, you know, all that, the same thing this time around? Well, I'm doing my my training camp, and that was very uh, frustrated, you know, to me, because, well, I know when you fight Ken Velasquez, you, you have to know, you know, probably it's almost sure we, we're we going to, he's going to try to take you down, you know, you're going to fight in the, the ground, 
And in that time, I spent a lot of energy, you know, trying to, to get up from the, the takedowns. And what he did good, you know, he did very well, the takedowns. And, of course, I was thinking, I was worried about the takedowns, and I took a lot of punches in the face, too. And, well, I think he did a great job, and uh, that was a, 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 a that was a good experience for me. Because... Uh, and that show me uh, that show me a lot about him, you know, about his, his style, his aggressive, or he, how hard he comes, uh, he, he pushed the fight, you know. So that was very important, and I know uh, how hard this ge- this guy can go. So I'm ready for this at this time, and I'll do everything to to don't let him do that again, you know. And uh, I think I'm prepared to do that. Yes. Yeah, I think you learned everything there there is to 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 know to have experience in, in that fight uh, about what he brings. Como é que é, Ana? Você acha que você já aprendeu tudo sobre o estilo dele, como é que ele luta e o que ele vai trazer para essa terceira luta entre vocês? No, I didn't. I didn't learn everything about him because you never learn everything about anyone, you know. Uh, because all the time the uh, people are improving. And I think uh, Ken Velasco take his career very serious, like I I do. So for sure he is improving in uh, a lot of different games, you know. And he's gonna bring something different for this fight. I think so too. You know, he got his black belt, so jiu-jitsu black belt. So maybe he he wants to 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 try some jiu-jitsu against me that this time, you know. So yeah, well. Uh, you never know what's gonna happen in the fight. MMA is very interesting because of that. You know, you never know what's gonna happen in the fight. Doesn't matter how expert you are. You know, I don't think uh, this kind of people exist. You know, experts in MMA because you never know what's gonna happen. So for sure, uh, I think it, it's gonna be a good fight for the fans because uh, uh, he's gonna give his best. You know, uh, push the fight like he always do uh, does and. Well, I'm gonna go there to knock him out. If I can, uh, I'm gonna go there to 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 give my best to win. You know. Yeah. And Junior, Kane just said that uh, he thinks this is the last time you guys are gonna fight. It seems like he feels like he's gonna be able to separate himself from you. Uh, what do you think about that? Well, I think he's very confident. You know, I think uh, I think because you know he's he's working hard and he, he thinks he's gonna win. So if he wins, you know, he won the second one and he's going to win if he, he, he thinks he's going to win this time. So I think I think uh, because of that, you know, then he thinks he can fight with other guys. And I think the same. Uh, but uh, I'm very confident, too, in what I think uh, uh, it's going to be different, you know. And we're going to fight each other again because uh, does, uh, I'm going to... Uh, I'm gonna win this time, you know, and we're gonna face each other again. Or it doesn't matter because I'm gonna keep myself in the in a good uh, position all the time. And you have, we have, it's a sport. We have to follow the rank, you know. And uh, I'll be on top of the rank all the time, and uh, we're gonna fight. All right, thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate it. Good luck with the fight. Thank you. And again, as a reminder, if you have a question today, please press star 1. That is star 1 on your telephone keypad to ask a question. We'll go to our next question from Heidi Fang with MMA Fight Corner. Hello, and thank you for the time. Uh, my first question is for Daniel. I understand that you're pulling double duty in this fight, having to corner Kane directly after you fight Roy. Uh, are you worried that you'll have to have any sort of backup plan for that, just in case you need treatment after the fight with Roy or anything of that nature? You, you know, we've uh, we've we've covered all of our bases in that sense that uh, we'll have something uh, else worked out. If I don't get to do it, then uh, you know we've got great coaches, Bob Cook, Leandro Vieira, and Javier Mendez that can they can they can take care of what happens in the fight. Granted, I would love to be that for Kane because, you know, we anticipate a dog fight again, a lot of wrestling. But, uh, you know, we've kind of we've kind of figured that it could happen either way. I, I expect to be in, in one tough fight. And I, I imagine having to just sit by the cage until Kane comes back to fight because one else is going to push me. 
and I don't know if I'll be able to get back there and get back. So even if I have to just sit there and wait for hearing them to come back, I think that'll be fine for me to try and help them as much as I can whenever he's fighting. Excellent. And the last time I spoke to you, Daniel, um, you had discussed your weight and dieting and getting down to about uh, 220 ahead of this fight. I was just curious if you could tell us where you are right now. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but, but you know, I've been mid-220, 225, uh, 224, somewhere in that area. So so I, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good where I am. I, I just want to be in a position now where when it is time to safely make that cut down to 205, I'm in a position where I don't have to try and kill myself. Excellent. Thank you. And uh, for Junior, I was watching the UFC primetime shows and seeing that you've brought in a Sambo camp to work with you on defending the takedowns and also maybe working some offensive takedowns. Uh, what has it been like to work with Pliev in this camp? Marcana. Que ela viu nos prime times que você está trabalhando com o Kefak Pliev para ajudar você a, a trabalhar nas defesas de queda e a ser mais agressivo com as suas quedas. O que, como é que tem sido trabalhar com o Kefak Pliev em preparação para essa luta? Uh, it has been very good to be training with Ketag, you know, he, he's, a, he's a great wrestler, wrestler, and we're on the best one I ever, I ever training with, you know, so uh, I'm feeling really good, very confident, you know, and I think it's important. We have to improve, to improve all the time, you know, especially uh, when you fight Ken Velasquez because he's, he, he's really good on the wrestling skills, you know, so uh, I, I just want to understand a little bit more about the wrestling and you know about the things that uh, happen during a wrestling uh, match. And Ketag is bringing me uh, a lot of good things, you know, from this. And I'm really happy. Thank you. And for Kane, I saw that you received your black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Do you hope that having escalated yourself to that level will help you do more with your ground game this time around being that, I mean, you landed those 11 takedowns against Junior in the last fight, but like you said, he was able to get up right away. Are you hoping that having the ability to work some jiu-jitsu on the ground will help you? You know, even in the last fight, I mean, I, I, I did try an armbar, you know, uh, against him. So, I mean, whatever I think, you know, he, he, he gives me, I'm going to try to take, and um, you know, it's the thing of, yeah, I mean, that's, that's what we're, we're, we're looking at in this fight, you know, not just focusing on one thing, not just, you know, takedowns and not just, you know, um, you know, we're, we're, we're going to keep them down. Hey, if the jiu-jitsu is there, then we're going to try it, you know, and this is what the game plan has always been. Excellent. Thank you for the time. Thank you. It appears there are no further questions at this time. I'd now like to turn the conference back to Mr. Ryan Grab for any additional or closing remarks. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank the fighters and honor for being available for the call today, as well as the media for attending. As a reminder, UFC Fight Night Maya versus Shields takes place tonight on Fox Sports 1 at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. The prelims also taking place on Fox Sports 1 beginning at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific, and the pre-show starting at 4. This week's episode of the Ultimate Fighter Team Rousey versus Team Tate airs immediately following the fights at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific. Thank you. Thank you for attending the call today. And that concludes today's conference call. Thank you for your participation.